And here to tell us more is our chief health editor, Dr. Partha Nandi. Dr. Nandi, this is an extremely high success rate, even higher than what we saw from Pfizer, which was, of course, announced last week. So it's really encouraging. You know, Amir, it's fantastic to me. And once again, I'm excited to be sharing great news, you know, that you can see that there's hope in the horizon with these potential vaccines. As you mentioned, we talked about Pfizer last week and their, you know, vaccine rate was 90% effective. And with Moderna, well, it's even higher, right? It's 94.5%. Having said that, we have to be realistic, right? Just as I said with Pfizer, these numbers are preliminary and could change because the trials are still ongoing, but really exciting news. Absolutely. And can you break down the data? What do we know right now about how many folks in this study so far have caught the virus? Absolutely. So in Moderna's study, Amira, 15,000 participants were given the vaccine, which consists of two shots four weeks apart. Now, then another 15,000 participants were given basically placebo saltwater shots, uh, not real vaccine. And, and the preliminary data shows that 95 cases of the uh, of, of the virus uh, so far. So 95 people caught the coronavirus. And so here's the good news. Only five of them had been given the experimental vaccine, while 90 of the people who got the infection had received the placebo shot. So what's really interesting here is that 11 of these cases were severe and they're all from the placebo group. So it suggests that it could this vaccine could potentially prevent people from getting severely sick, which is also really, really encouraging. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you have talked before about how distribution and storage might be a bit tricky when it comes to the type of vaccine. So talk about that and how this new vaccine might be different from what Pfizer is producing. This is a super important question, Amira, because the two vaccines, if they're not transported and if they're not stored properly, they'll become inactive. In other words, they'll be useless. So what temperatures uh, do they need? So for Moderna's vaccine, right, they need to be stored at a minus four degrees Fahrenheit, which is which is cold. But check this out. Pfizer's vaccine needs to be kept at minus 94 Fahrenheit, super cold. And it's a bit of a hurdle because most doctor's offices like mine and clinics and pharmacies don't have these ultra cold freezers. So while it's a challenge for Pfizer, it's not that that much of an issue with Moderna. Now, Moderna's vaccine is kept at the same temperature as the chicken box and other vaccines. So people are familiar with it. So most places can store it and uh, Moderna's vaccine has a 30 day shelf life in the refrigerator and could last 12 hours at room temperature. All, also good thing. So I'm really ecstatic to share this news right about any potential vaccine being offered. But we got to remember this is still right going to be months away when when this is going to be available to general public. So in the meantime, we've got to be vigilant, do what we need to do, mask mask up, you know, social distance, disinfect. We can't think, okay, it's all over now. We can do whatever we want. We need to protect ourselves until we get these vaccines. And even after that time. Absolutely. It's not going to be a silver bullet. We know that. All right. Exactly right. Dr. Nandy, as always, thank you so much for that uh, very, very informative information.